In section 3.3, we're going to study the factor theorem. The factor theorem is used to factor polynomials of a degree higher than a power of 2. So just like the remainder theorem that we learned in 3.2, if the divisor of a polynomial is x minus a, and you plug a in for x in the polynomial, you should get a remainder of 0. So the factor theorem written mathematically says this. If I take some number a and plug it into my polynomial for x, and it works out to make the polynomial 0, then x minus a is a factor of that polynomial. This example will kind of illustrate what we're talking about. Let's call this polynomial p of x. Okay, and we're asking, is x minus 2 a factor of this polynomial? Well, basically, if I plug 2 in for x in my polynomial, and if that equals 0, then x minus 2 is a polynomial, is a factor. And yes, 2 makes it 0, therefore x minus 2 is a factor of the polynomial. All right. Just pause the video quickly and give this one a try. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance. Again, we'll make this equal p of x. So let's try p of 1. So I get 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 squared minus 5 times 1 minus 6. This works out to be negative 8. So therefore, x minus 1 is not a factor because the remainder is not zero. All right, uh, these questions here, this question, I'm gonna have you try these during our assignment today, but if you understand what's going on, it's not a big deal. All you're gonna do is plug in one, negative one, two, negative two, see which ones makes it zero, and then those ones would be factors of the polynomial. All right, let's look at um, factoring fully um, the polynomial, um, P of x, which is 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 3. Okay, so if we take a look at this one, okay, um, when, we, when it says factor fully, okay, we usually will start with a polynomial that is bigger than degree 2, and you can see this is a degree 3. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find that initial factor something that makes it a zero. So we're going to look at the coefficients of plus or minus three, and this is what this previous slide called the integral zero theorem talks about. In a nutshell, basically take factors of three, which are plus or minus one, plus or minus three, plug them into the polynomial and see if they equal zero. So that's our first step. So two times one cubed, minus 5 times 1 squared, minus 4 times 1 plus 3. Clearly, you can see right away this doesn't equal 0. Let's try negative 1. So this works out to be negative 2 minus 5 plus 4 minus 3. This equals 0. Therefore, x minus negative 1 which is really x plus 1, is a factor of my polynomial. So I found my first factor. Now, once I found my first factor, I'm going to use synthetic division to find the second factor. So I'm using the number I plugged into my polynomial in that part of my factor theorem. I have to make sure my polynomial is in descending order, and it is. And there are no uh, terms that are missing, so I just write down the coefficients 2, negative 5, negative 4, and 3. 2 comes down, and now negative 1 times 2 is going to give me negative 2. If I add those, I get negative 7. Negative 1 times negative 7 is 7. If I add those, I get 3. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. I add those, and I get 0. So my first factor I'll just write it right here, it was still x minus 1, or sorry, x plus 1, I got that from here. And then these numbers down here are the coefficients for a polynomial one degree less than the original question. So that means the 2 will have an x squared, the 7 will have an x, and the 3 will be the constant. Now you have to say, is this guy factorable, because it's a quadratic, and yes it is, that quadratic factors in 
2x and x, and that's minus 3 and minus 1. And those would be the three factors that fully factor my polynomial 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 3. Our last example, we're going to be factoring a quartic, which is a degree 4. So again, I start by looking at factors of my constant, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, or plus or minus 4. And for notation purposes, we'll call this polynomial P of X. And if we start at 1, we get X, or 1 to the 4th, minus 3 times 1 cubed, minus 1 squared, plus 7 times 1 minus 4. If you work this out, I get 0. So therefore, x minus 1 is a factor of my polynomial. Okay, so now I need to find the other factors. So I'm going to use synthetic division. And again, my polynomial, I have to check it's in descending order. And there are no missing terms. I'm going to go to work on this. This 1 comes down, and 1 times 1 gives me 1. If I add negative 3 and 1, I get negative 2. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. If I add those, I get negative 3. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. If I add those, I get 4. And 1 times 4 is 4. If I add those, I get 0. So my first factor was my original one that I found, the x minus 1. And these guys here are going to be the coefficients for a polynomial one less than the original question. So the original question was a fourth. So that means I have 1x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. So now I have a polynomial factor still that is a degree 3. So I'm going to apply the factor theorem again to this part. So I'm going to let this highlighted part be polynomial q of x. So again, the factors are the same as before, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4. And for q of x, I'm going to try 1 again, 1 cubed, minus 2 times 1 squared, minus 3 times 1 plus 4. That is 0. Therefore, x minus 1 is a factor of q of x. So again, we're going to apply synthetic division to the polynomial q of x. So I'm going to use 1, negative 2, negative 3, and 4. Again, 1 times 1 is going to give me 1. If I add negative 2 and 1, I get negative 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. I add those, I get negative 4. And 1 times negative 4 is going to be 4. I add those, I get 0. So again, it's a factor because I get a remainder of 0. So don't forget now when we write our final answer, I have my initial factor of x minus 1. I have my next factor of x minus 1. And these are the coefficients of a polynomial 1 degree less than a third. So it's going to be 1x squared minus x minus 4. And again, this guy here cannot be factored. I could multiply those together or write it as x minus 1 squared times x squared minus x minus 4, and there would be your fully factored quartic. All right, so there are the answers for, um, or there's a question, sorry, for the assignment today on page 133. So if you have any questions, again, we can discuss those in class.